when I get into the <laughs> when I get into the field, uh, the biggest thing I just feel like I got to defend my land. Mm. Like I'm a house, I got my house, and then somebody's trying to invade my property. I'm just feeling like, oh, I'll find any way to defend my land. Daniil Hunter was on Texans All Access with Mark Vandermeer and John Harris. I only have the audio, so I'm going to splice the Daniil Hunter highlights over the top of them. First question was about the number 99. Remember, we were all wondering, oh, is he going to wear the sacred number 99? Uh, we know that he isn't. Here's how he came by that decision. It was it was straight away like, oh, man, uh, JJ, he did a lot with that number. You know, he did. He built his legacy for the community and the city of Houston and the Texans. So immediately I knew I was going to touch that number. Yeah. Okay. The, the one interesting thing I thought about that was he's from Katy. So when he talked about doing things for the city of Houston, I, I, it hits a little bit closer to Denny Hunter. I, I do like that because he's local, it wasn't even a thought in his mind. It was like, ah, I'm not messing with that. He was here too for, you know, peak JJ mystique. When Daniil Hunter would have been like uh, in what high school or so, or early, uh, early in his LSU days, um, boy, I might be dating myself and how uh, how long ago that seems. So no big deal there. They asked him next about where did he learn to to rush the passer, his particular style. John Harris made a uh, a really good observation about his style, which is that sometimes, like like it was with Mario Williams to a certain degree. Sometimes it'll look like he's not even in the play, like maybe he's getting washed past the quarterback, but he's got a really good knack for getting his hand in and getting the ball out and making plays. So John just asked him what what his influences were and how he came to have that skill. I feel like it's a big combination of a lot of things, you know, the guys that's been there before me that I've learned from and he's just staying active as a pass rusher. I think mean, that's the biggest thing when you're rushing a passer, you got to stay active. You know, if you're not active, then you're going to be in a net. You're not going to be able to move around a guy or whatever. But um, the biggest thing is just having technique and just staying active. That that one was actually easy to pay attention to what he was saying because that's exact. I I'd selected most of those clips for showing just how tenacious he is in hitting multiple moves. It's one of the first things my defensive line coach with the Jaguars, John Pease, ever told me, which is that most sacks in the NFL come on second or third moves. If you have this notion that you're going to be, you know, J.J. Watt quick swimming somebody all the time, then get rid of it unless you're a physical freak of nature. And even J.J., most of his were on counter moves or second or third moves, or they're, you know, with a scrambling quarterback, so it gets flushed out. You got to make a move just to separate. Daniel Hunter is very good at that. This is where it gets exciting. This is something that Will Anderson needs to continue to work at. In college, Will had a tendency sometimes to just kind of lock horns and try to turn it into a a, a, a a sumo wrestling match. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. He's working his way out of that. He learned that he had to against NFL-sized offensive tackles. But it, it is, it's going to be really, really good for him to see Daniil Hunter every day working just that constant kung fu movie, this arsenal of moves over and over and again. And when, when he says action... It really is. I mean, those guys, the premier pass rushers, they drill everything so much that almost which move you hit is your secondary or third move. You're not thinking about that. It just comes naturally as long as you have that mindset of like, okay, I'm going to hit a move, hit a move, hit a move, hit a move. This is going to be really good for Will Anderson. Getting very excited about this. Uh, so next question that they had for Daniil Hunter. Oh, this is uh, John Harris. He has the same thing of Will Anderson. Let's see how the questions differ or are the same. He asked Daniil Hunter whether pass rushing is an art or a science. You might recall that Will Anderson said that on the left side for him, it's art, but on the right side, it's more science because he has to think about it. Here's Daniil Hunter's answer to that same question. Uh, I think it's a combination of both, you know, because um, science, you got it. You got that edge. Right. And if you if you're not by that edge if you're not if you're not doing what you need to do to get by that edge you're not gonna beat, right. the, beat the guy in front of you so i feel like it's a combination of that and it's a combination of just bringing your skill bringing your attributes uh your god-given talents each guy's different so there's there's something that works for each guy that they know that they'll be able to beat a guy with yeah so okay the science i i, I it's interesting when we started talking about the edge and beating a guy around the edge because that's where the geometry of it comes in that's that's another thing that will got a lot better and he talked about this at the end of the year is just understanding the angles, understanding just which angle to launch off at 
um, when you need to beat a guy by, like what your landmarks are. And it's one thing that really started to emerge at the end of the season for Will with Daniil Hunter. He it, He's saying it looks like science, but like many things, like musicians or any other high-level performers, uh, the things that they're very meticulous about, it's art to us. Like, as I watched Daniil Hunter, I'm like, oh, damn, that's art, man. That, it's just freaking beautiful the way he operates. Will, again, is going to learn a lot from Daniil Hunter, I think. Uh, you guys had some fun yesterday with saying that uh, it sounded like Daniel sounded like uh, like Will was taking a shot at John Grenard when he talked about how he's been waiting for a guy like Daniel Hunter. In fairness to Grenard, I do, for obviously I don't think Will was taking a shot at Grenard, but also in fairness to Grenard, Grenard's still a young pass rusher. Like Grenard has not come completely into his own. He is not a man in full when it comes to being a, a polished pass rusher. Whereas Daniel Hunter is, and I think that's where it's going to be really, really good for Will Anderson. And you can already hear too in, in Daniel Hunter's voice. He he sounds like a mature older veteran to like Will Anderson, who's just so excited and bushy tailed and full of verve. It's beautiful. I need to crush it. Last question for Daniel Hunter, and this one came from Mark Vandermeer, was about what his mindset is on game day. It, because he is, he's a, he sounds like such a mild-mannered guy, right? How does he do all these fierce things on game day? When I get into the, <laughs> when I get into the field, uh, the biggest thing, I just feel like I got to defend my land. Mm. Like I'm a house, I got my house, and then somebody's trying to invade my property, I'm just feeling like, oh, I'll find any way to defend my land, my family or whatever, my, my friends. So... Just the biggest thing is just in order to defend my land, I got to make a play and I got to get to the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there too, on some of those hits, that, that last one, I don't think got flagged. He's got a pretty good neck. This is where it helps being 260 pounds and like a long 260 pounds. I think he can kind of, it doesn't look like he's landing on a quarterback hard. So when he tries to push off a roll over, these officials aren't giving him these asinine penalties that other guys are getting. The imagination of defending your land or your house. That's a good one. We've talked about how you got to go water boy as a defensive player sometimes. You got to really imagine that evil things have been done to you or that that person was the evildoer. Uh, probably the best ever in the history of football at that was Greg Lloyd because Greg Lloyd, the linebacker for the Steelers, one time uh, on the field when I was playing with the Jacksonville, Keenan McArdle... <laughs> Keenan McArdle said that Greg Lloyd started yelling at him about Keenan McArdle calling his house uh, and harassing his family. And Keenan was Keenan was like on the sideline saying this and saying, I, I've never met this man or his family in his life. I don't know what he's talking about. Luckily, I had read about this and I could tell I told Keenan, it's just his thing, man. He's just kind of psycho. He just talks himself into this stuff. I don't know. Waterboy wasn't even out yet, but he was going Waterboy on him. Uh, so Daniel Hunter pretending to protect his house. That's effective. As it stands right now on paper, is this defense better than last year's? Very good question. One big problem that they have is that they don't have a second starting cornerback. You've got a starting slot in Des King. You've got a A1 starter in Derek Stingley, but you don't have a starting cornerback to replace Steven Nelson. Uh, the, the thing about that is there's, there's a boatload of guys out there in free agency right now who are basically around Steven Nelson level. Steven Nelson actually in a lot of services is listed as the best free agent available. I think the if I had to bet on Steven Nelson versus the field coming back, I might say Steven Nelson at this point. Um, they did the right thing, which is for a guy who'd had a previous contract agitation slash insulting the GM on social media, they needed to be sure that he understood he was getting fair value so he can sit out on the market he can take whatever's come whatever offers come and, and make a judgment for himself whether to come back or not um but i don't think they're gonna have to worry about that and then beyond that you know there's um i mean like Xavier howard's the first name that that jumps to mind but there's a there's a, a good chunk of guys out there right now that especially if this defensive front is rushing the pass or the way they look on paper your defensive backs get a lot better immediately. And I think Derek Stingley being healthy and them starting to utilize him towards the end of the season, uh, traveling with the, the number one receivers, that's going to open up things for the defensive backfield. So I, I would say on paper right now, yes. Al Shire is a better linebacker overall than Blake Cashman is. Um, the 
Danico Autry is a better uh, is a better like full time player um, than a lot of the guys that they had at the edge last year. I mean, Derek Barnett comes back, and then Daniel Hunter simply just like he's just John Grenard's never had a single year like an average year that Derek uh, that that uh, Daniel Hunter has. So did I say Derek Barnett? Daniel Hunter. So um, they're better right now. They're better right now. But they obviously they got to fill in a few spots. Um, the defensive tackle position, it's different. I think they've got more stoutness in there against the run. I don't think they have the same penetrating ability. That's the one spot. Obviously, they want to get Eric Armstead in here. That's the one spot at either in the draft or maybe via another free agency acquisition. They need to get better on paper right now. 